Hey guys, um, welcome back. <laughs> uh, recently, one of my local cinemas near me was showing Jurassic Park on the big screen, and it was a delight to go and see this 1993 movie again. I love a dinosaur movie, and um, yeah, it holds up really well, honestly. Still very tense and entertaining, and um, I love that scene with the T-Rex. Anyway, it made me want to read the book out of curiosity. The book originally came out in 1990, and this copy of mine, much loved and beaten up, is a later movie tie-in printing. <laughs> I got this for a couple of bucks, so I spared no expense to bring you <laughs> this video, <laughs> clearly. Um, as you can see from the cover, there were more than 8 million copies of this book in print at the date this edition came out, which um, is a long time ago, I guess, several decades. And uh, yeah, the New York Times felt that this was Michael Crichton's best to date, which is kind of interesting. Um, I can't comment on that since this book was my first Michael Crichton, um, but I am very excited to share it with you. In case you're not familiar, um, <laughs> Jurassic Park is a science fiction novel about a theme park on a remote Costa Rican island in its days before opening. The park is very high tech and contains genetically engineered dinosaurs. The investors are concerned and thinking about pulling their funds from the venture and the park's owner invites a paleontologist, um, the paleontologist's paleobotanist assistant, a chaos theoretician and a lawyer who represents the investors. And he also invites his grandchildren to the island in the hope that they will prove that the park will be a huge success, that it's safe, it's a good investment, all that kind of stuff. However, events are in motion and soon all hell breaks loose. To me, this feels like the kind of book 90s era business boys used to pick up at the airport and to read. And that's not an insult. By that, I mean, it's interesting, entertaining, but also has a couple of ideas to make you think or make you feel like your spot. And it's also aimed at the average reader. And it's topical. The idea of science interfering with nature was a theme of the 90s. But more specifically, the idea of commercialized genetic engineering of plants, animals, even people was creating a lot of fear and debate in that time period. Terms like designer babies and test tube babies were thrown around in discussion a lot. The equivalent now would be something like AI and the way that there's a lot of fear, sometimes misunderstanding and concerns around its use and its lack of regulation or even the way we can't tell what its impact on our lives will be. This exploring of the scientific and the topical within this thriller genre are kind of Michael Crichton's trademark, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him later on. When I think of the Jurassic Park movie, I think of it as being maybe aimed, loosely speaking, at family audiences. Um, it was rated PG when it came out, but I remember watching it when I was a kid and definitely under the age of 12, and I loved it. I was scared, but in a thriller type way, not in a nightmare type of way. Uh, the movie is a spectacle, much like the park itself is designed to be. And the fact that it's Spielberg directed definitely adds to this feeling of wonder, big budget feels and being aimed at like a wide commercial audience. So maybe not exactly a family film because you can't maybe take your young kids to it, but it sort of has that broad, uh, broad market appeal. But the book is a little different in tone and style. From the movie, you might be expecting something a little bit akin to Peter Benchley's Jaws, which I may actually share with you guys at some point as well. Jurassic Park opens with some characters who didn't make it into the film. We are in Costa Rica and some strange lizard-like creatures are attacking children and small animals, implying to us that the dinos are not contained, foreshadowing events somewhat. And also, we're immediately introduced to the notion of the company InGen, who have invested in Jurassic Park, covering up their bad practices, and then other similar companies trying to steal their ideas, and there's not a lot of ethics involved. We get an opening um, sequence or talk about biotechnology and how it's used for commercial products without oversight or federal laws and restrictions, because it's so new, there aren't regulations created for it yet um 
And it feels like conversations we have today about how fast technology is progressing, uh, regulating fake news, things like that, for example, or online scammers getting smarter and smarter. Um, yeah, law and, sci law and science cannot keep pace with tech and the market or greed for commercializing it. So yeah, the more things change, the more they stay the same, I guess. Um, we also learn about the way that the nature of science has changed in the modern world. Science and research now has commercial affiliations where in the past, scientific discovery was almost without borders. Scientists published and made public their work and sort of debated it. They were not businessmen. Um, I'm not sure you could debate that, but that's kind of the idea we're talking about. This makes me think of um, the commercialized sort of big pharma in the US and that kind of thing. Um, honestly, it's pretty fascinating to read about and um, it's just detailed information that the movie could not really get across. So this feels much more uh, staunch and thought provoking than the tone the movie took or could take. And it's a really wonderful opening to the book, honestly. Um, the film did keep bits of this. Um, it kept a lot of the chaos theory stuff and the idea that we don't know what we're doing when we mess with nature. Um, <laughs> obviously that famous Ian Malcolm, Jeff Goldblum quote comes to mind. My point is really that uh, this is just not unfamiliar to us and the new stories, stories we read and that makes it all as you're reading, feel like it's something that could happen. So it feels a bit more, um, makes the whole thing more scary. So suffice it to say, this book really goes into the details of how the park works, its computing systems, the all the genetic um, engineering and stuff and the machines they need to do that, the business angles, the legal team, um, anything else you could possibly want to know about the park, it's all in there. I found the writing around this like pretty accessible and it made me think a little more about how flaws in those um, systems might happen human error or just the vast amount of money and people involved in this park allow for human error and i liked that i kind of wondered if other readers uh, might find all this sort of theorizing or technical detail kind of dry but then I thought, you know, it's a best-selling book, so maybe not. But I really liked the depth of thought and planning that the author put in here. There's definitely a sense of foreboding as you read, and the characters are also being built here in this early section of the book, or this first half of the book. And the little plot threads that are going to be woven into what happens later are there. And of course, there's the wonder of exploring the park and um, discovering little things and the dino nursery and all of that too. And then, loosely speaking, in the second half of the book, it gets really, really intense and more scary with the breakdown of the park systems and the book's plot is kind of similar enough to the movie, not exactly the same, which is great, honestly. Um, you don't always know what is going to happen as you read, so that, but some of it is the same or broadly maybe the same. So as a fan of the movie, it's kind of satisfying because you get some things happen that you don't expect but it's also kind of satisfying so casting for the film was amazing the perfect cast to play the characters like really really perfect there are some small differences with the grandchildren the ages are swapped so the girl is the younger sibling in the book and i found her so just stupid and annoying um <laughs> in the book alan is about 40 and Ellie here is his 24 year old grad student and colleague, not his girlfriend. And in the book, he likes kids because kids like dinosaurs. Um, the lawyer in the book is not as much of a bad guy. He's a little bit more human, though he still isn't really a good guy either. The movie lawyer is just like a 90s era movie lawyer. And Hammond, the maker of the park, in the book, he's got a little bit more of a P.T. Barnum vibe or a huckster, hustler vibe, um, which is a bit more cynical, but there's still, he's still a lot like the movie version of him, which is, I really like that. Um, one thing that the book has that I think would not work on screen well, and it's probably why they didn't keep it in, is that we learn that Hammond has an elephant that's been genetically engineered to be the size of a cat. 
and he takes it with him to these investor meetings when he's raising funds for the park. And this idea is so poignant. Like, what little kid or even an adult would not be swayed by the idea of this elephant that you could have as a house pet? Um, either as a commercial prospect or just as something you would want yourself. The issue is that the elephant isn't super happy or healthy and can be randomly aggressive, foreshadowing the nature and some of the issues with the dinosaurs in the book. So it's like a little microcosm of the project as a whole. Cute idea, but a messy and sad reality. And it's just a nice little touch. Um, I read this book over two nights. It's about 400 pages, and I was really interested and invested the whole time. I'm really glad I came across this one and got to read it um, for fun. I had a little Jurassic Park ambience on in the background on YouTube. It added a little something to my reading experience. Um, the book, like I said, can be a little dry sometimes. It has actual computer coding in it at some points, for example. But because the pacing is good and there's this sort of foreshadowing and this building of tension, I was having a great time. So that kind of, I enjoyed the detail. It didn't bother me. I do wonder if it would put off some readers. Um, but I really liked it when the proverbial started to hit the fan and it all went wrong. Dinosaurs are the best. They're huge and terrifying. And um, this rampage and all of the chaos was tense and very engrossing. The book is not very gory, but it doesn't shy away from it either, making it a bit darker than the movie to good effect. It's not horror story levels or anything, but dinosaurs are messy eaters. <laughs> And I think the focus on science and money, exploitation and chaos theory really added something. So it's a good time, um, as long as you're not one of the characters, I guess. So the book being the bestseller that it was and the film being the highest grossing film up and up until that time um, makes this book kind of the signature book of Michael Crichton's career. But it's not the most interesting thing about him. Crichton went to medical school, but on completing his education, he felt more drawn to writing. And he wrote a total of about 26 books, and 12 of those were made into films. His books are like Jurassic Park, often techno thrillers or uh, science fiction type thrillers with warnings about the direction that science is heading in and its danger to humanity or cautionary tales about messing with nature and its consequences. Some of his notable works are The Andromeda Strain, Congo, Sphere, amongst many others. Crichton also worked in TV and movies, he created the TV series ER, and also wrote and directed the 1973 movie Westworld, which is also about theme park. He led an interesting life. He did a lot of talks about various issues and scientific subjects. He was married five times. He was six foot nine, interestingly. And after his death in 2008, his unfinished books were um, published, like finished by different writers and published posthumously. <laughs> and his works are still being adapted for the screen. There's one um, in development that is uh, potentially due to come out this year or next year. So he was quite the powerhouse. He's a really interesting person. Um, yeah. So that's Michael Crichton. If you are a Jurassic Park fan, I would love to know if you've read this book and what you thought, or if you've read any of the author's other works and you like loved them or hated them, let me know because um, I don't know, I might read another of his books. I quite enjoyed this one. And um, I recommend this book if you like this kind of science fiction thriller, or if you're a fan of the Jurassic Park movies. Um, yeah, it's good fun. I, I had a really good time reading it. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. And um, thank you for joining me again on this little journey. I'll see you next time. You can check out some of my other videos. I also have another channel and social, so you can find links below if you want more of that. And if you want to hang out again, remember to like and subscribe. And you can always leave a comment. Let me know what you thought or let me know what else you might want to see. Thank you.